Here you can see that I've made a single object for the machine that I'm going to assemble in CoSpaces. Now remember, you need to make each of your parts individually, so there's no more of my machine other than this piston part, which is going to go backwards and forwards. So I need to export this now, and in order for it to be seen in uh, CoSpaces, we need to make sure we export it as the right file. So here's my piston, and I'm going to click on the export option up over here, and I want to export it as an OBJ file, so I'm going to click on that. And in my com uh, computer here, it's going to download it as a zip file. I'm just going to click save the file. And that's how we export it. And in a moment, I'll show you how we open it up and then import it into CoSpaces. You can see here from my downloads folder that I've downloaded four parts of my machine as uh, OBJ files, but they come down in a zip file. So I now need to extract these. So I'm going to right click on this object here and click on open. And can you see how it now turns from a zip file into a folder? I'll do it again with the machine body. Now, you on your computer, you may see the word extract rather than open. If you see extract, click on extract and it will extract it for you. Now, when we go inside these folders now, they've been extracted. We can see here there's an object here, Tinker OBJ. They're all called Tinker OBJ. And it's this file that we're going to now upload into CoSpaces. I've signed into my CoSpaces account. Now, it may be that your teacher needs to sign up and create a class account first, but hopefully you can do this just by yourselves. And I've logged into my CoSpaces page here, and I'm going to create a new CoSpace. So I'm going to click on this. Now, on the free account, you, only, you can only have two CoSpaces, two CoSpaces models at any one time. So there's a demo one that's already in place for you, and you can just delete that and then it will give you two. So we're going to create a co-space now. And you can create uh, an AVR VR co-space. The merge cube option won't be available to you. And you can either create a 360 degree image or a 3D environment. Let's create a 3D environment. And we've got this plane on which we can now create our object. Now down here we have the library and in the library we've got a whole range of people. Now again I've got the pro account so all of mine are open so not all of yours will be but when you finish making your object you can decorate it so we could make our environment here. I can click on edit I can choose any space that I want that's already created here. I don't want any of those at the moment. So I'm not going to bother with that. If we come back to the library, you can have um, housing and objects as things we could put inside. And again, some of these won't be available to you, but we could put these around our machine if we wanted to. Um, but importantly, there are also some building blocks as well that we might want to use a bit later on. But we've done all our building in Tinkercad, so we're going to click on the upload op model here, option, sorry. And we're going to upload 3D models. So I'm going to click on this. And down here, can you see it says OBJ? That's why we want OBJ files. So I'm going to click on Upload. I'm going to go to my Downloads. The first thing I want to upload is my machine body. So I found my machine body in my Downloads. Click on here. And there it is, my Tinker object. I'm going to click on this. So here it is. And now what I want to do is actually put it in the space. So all I've got to do is drag it into the space. And you can see here that it's absolutely massive. So we want to do something with this, it's huge. So I'm gonna click on this icon here and I can scale it. And I can now move it to wherever I want to move it. So these tools here, that scale, move, rotate, and translation. So we're just going to click on here. I'm gonna click and drag and scale this to where, however I want it to be. So I'm just gonna put this in front of the camera. And let's come into my environment here. Here's my machine. We can go around my environment, that's good. This time I'm going to put, upload the cog and I can duplicate this. So I've only made one cog and I'll be able to scale it and I'll show you how to do this. So I'm gonna click on this object here and I'm not sure which is which now. I assume it's this one, let's add this into here. Yep, again, it's a massive thing. So I'm gonna make it smaller. 
I'm going to lose sight of where it is, so it's over here. Let's just scale it down. And I'm going to put it over here and move it around. Now what I want to do is I want to put it on here as, uh, as according to my plan. So the first thing I need to do is rotate it. So on here I want to rotate it through 90 degrees. So I can rotate it through 90 degrees like this. And then I can lift it up in the air. And then let's make ourselves orient ourselves so we're here. I can now push it in this direction. We don't want it, we want it just off the machine. So let's orient ourselves. I want it, I want to go up and I want to go across. I want to go up, there we go. Now, we've got options now. Everything's gray, which is pretty boring. So we can click on here, so let's click on material and let's just say I want to make it black. There's my cog, so now I'm going to do this. You can see why it's now important to make things separate. So when I when I color the machine and I decide to make it green, for example, the whole machine is green, which is a bit of a pain. So if you wanted to make your chimney in, in separate colors, you could do it and assemble the whole thing separately. So here's my cog. Um, I want to actually not have it interfere with um, the side of my machine. So I'm going to come to about here, drag it down. And you can tinker with this and, and sort it out. I just want to show you how this works. Now what I want to do now is I want to duplicate. So now I've got two cogs. Now I want this cog to be smaller. So I'm going to just come around to here, click on the scale function and make it smaller. And I'm going to put this cog, where am I going to put this cog? I'm going to put it right up in the machine here against the other machine. So and you can now can just move this until it looks like the cogs are inter interacting and they are. So now I've started starting to assemble my machine together. I'm going to get the other bits and put the machine together and we'll so do the coding. I've uploaded all the elements that I wanted to show how to code in CoSpaces. So what I've got here now is two gears that one I want to turn one way and one to turn the other way and I've got this piston which I want to go left and right. And so this is why we, it's important when we design and build our machine in Tinkercad, we design it in separate um, bits so that we can um, then animate each of these individually in CoSpaces. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this piston. And this is all gonna be a bit of trial and error really when we do this, we don't quite know how far the object is going to move, but we can just experiment here. So if we right click on an object like this, we can see up here in this menu here is, call this Tinker 5, we can get rid of this now, we'll just call it Piston, so we know what we're talking about. And I'm gonna click on Code here, and we're going to click on Use in Code Blocks. So that's now ready to go. So up in the top corner here is Code, and we're going to use Code Blocks. And we're going to, when Play is clicked, we're going to click on Transform. So we've got piston here, and we're going to see, I don't know how far, this, I don't know what the scale is, which is why we've got to experiment here. So we've got one meter, so we're just going to see how far that moves. So that's all I'm going to do. When play is clicked, move piston one meter forward. And I don't actually know which way it's going to go. We've got some options here, left, right, up, down. I suspect I need to choose right. But we've got these options here, but we can go we can work on this in a moment. But I'm going to click on right, depending on my orientation. If it goes forward, it's going to go into the object. We won't have to find it again, it could be a pain. Um, and we will um, see what happens. So let's come close this, we finish this, and click play. And it sure moves to the right, um, but the right is the orientation that I made the model in. So this is where we need to start thinking a little bit more uh, laterally. So if, if down is right, then right means up. So let's come back to code and let's not move that right. Let's move this up. Let's see what happens now. Let's close this. So let's click play. Oh, it's not working either. I have to do some more experimenting. 
the key thing with all of this is to just keep experimenting. So in our last two attempts, the piston moved in the directions we didn't expect it to move. It didn't make logical sense to our brains, but it does to the way the, the code blocks work. So we've got to change it. So it looks like the default setting was probably the right one. So I've changed it here to when click when play is clicked, one, move one meter forward. Let's just test that. So let's close this, click play, and we can see our piston pushing out. So that looks like it's going to be working. That's much better. Let's come back to code. All I need to do now is duplicate this. So there we are. And so the opposite of moving forward is obviously moving backwards. So click backwards. And I'm going to put a control block into here. And I'm going to put the things in here. So if forever it's going to move forwards and then move backwards. Let's just test that. And it is working. So we can see our piston working backwards and forwards. And so now, after trial and error, we've got our machine beginning to work the way we want it to work. And next, we move on to the cogs. We've come back to Tinkercad because it's very important if you want to make something rotate in co-spaces that you get the orientation and the origin of your object, in this case, our cog, um, in the right place. If it's in the wrong place, then you'll have all kinds of difficulties making the cog rotate in co-spaces. I'll show you the code in a moment. But before we export this object here, it's very important if to make sure, I'll just zoom out, that you put your object, in this case the um, cog, exactly on this center line here. This center line is the halfway point of the work plane. And as best as we can, we've made the center point of the circle the on the center line of the um, work plane. And also you can see here that we've actually put the the object, we've sunk it halfway through the work plane, so we've actually set the center point of this entire object through the horizontal and the, um, or the X and the Y pl planes through the center point of the object. And now in co-spaces, our object will rotate around this point. And if you get it slightly off, you'll get a slightly eccentric um, turn to your object, and that, that could be fine. So that's how that's it's very important. And the other thing you need to note is that it's actually in the right orientation. If you make it flat to the plane, if you were going to 3D print it, you will get a different point of origin. So when you're ready to um, export this, make sure you've rotated it so it's the cog is standing up. If you want the cog to be on a vertical plane, you need to make sure that it is centered like this. So after a lot of fiddling around, here we are back with our machine. We've managed to get the piston to go in and out. Um, and obviously we can make other things if we wanted to. We could have something come lift up and over here or push out of the side or something slide out or um, flap up from here. But we also want to get these gears working. And so what we can, what we can see here is we can actually make these work. And so we come to the code now. What we're going to look at is each of these. And the important thing here, it's a bit of a fiddle. So you click on here, when play, when play is clicked and put in a forever block, you need to use this origin and direction block. And what's important is to make sure that you keep those as zeros. Now in the vertical plane, you need to make sure that the Y is set to one. And if you're on a different plane, you might have to play with some of these um, figures, but always just play with ones and it will turn in the way that you want it to. So if you had a cog, for example, on this face here, you might want to make sure that you've you've rotated it in. Um, oops. You've rotated it in um, Tinkercad, so it's facing this way because you know you want to put it on the plane in that direction. So let's have a look at how this works now. So let's come back to here. I can actually I just might zoom in a bit and make sure that this particular cog I can just see is not touching the surface. So I'm going to click on my object here and just gonna move it back in. There we go. So I'm just gonna slide away and I set the camera. So now if we close this and click play, you can see now that my objects, they're clashing slightly. So a bit of fiddling to do, but you can see I've got my 
my gears working the way I wanted to. And can you see that slightly eccentric um, rotation that I got there? That's because I didn't put the center exactly where I wanted it to be in the example I showed you. This is an earlier version. But you might want a slightly eccentric cog, that's fine. And so that's how you start to make um, individual elements in Tinkercad and you can assemble them here in co-spaces and then animate them individually in um, co-spaces